uh, just yesterday, and we know a lot now. Pope Francis spoke to a house full of Jesuits, dismissing what he called sins below the waist. Is it any wonder an archbishop in Berlin is green lighting same sex blessings? <laughs> with the latest from the Eternal City Church Milton Rome correspondent, Dr. Jules Gomez. Jules, the bishops of the world, especially in Germany, are pushing forward with blessing same-sex unions, even though the Catholic Church officially bans such blessings. And seems one reason for their boldness is the off-the-cuff remarks Pope Francis makes on what Bishop Robert Barron called the pelvic issues. Can you tell us about one such meeting Pope Francis had recently with Jesuits when in Portugal for World Youth Days earlier this month, uh, but the details of that, which were only made public yesterday? Uh, Brad, we know that whenever Pope Francis goes on his apostolic journeys, he tries to meet the local Jesuit communities. And one such meeting took place on the 5th of August when Pope Francis went to Portugal to celebrate World Youth Day. Uh, he met with a number of Jesuits there, both priests and religious brothers, and about 10 of them were given the opportunity to ask him uh, questions. And now Father Antonio Spadaro, uh, Pope Francis's spin doctor and the editor of La Tibilta Cattolica, the uh, oldest uh, magazine in Italy, uh, Jesuit magazine, uh, published uh, the uh, back and forth between Francis and the Jesuits uh, just yesterday, and we know a lot now about what happened during that meeting. Now, Jules, the fact that this meeting took place on August 5th during World Youth Days and that Spadaro just published it yesterday means that they had some time to uh, edit it, gather their thoughts, look it over, rubber stamp it, and all of that. So what we're about to go into here kind of had a, a time to be looked over a bit. During that encounter, Francis reportedly took a swipe at conservative Catholics in America. Can you tell us about that? Now, Francis was extremely insulting in his, uh, you know, he was asked by one of the brothers there uh, about uh, the situation in the United States. This brother had spent a sabbatical, a whole year in the United States, and he talked about how he felt a number of uh, Catholics, including bishops, were anti-Francis, and he used the word reactionary. So he asked for Francis to comment, and Pope Francis called uh, such Catholics, he used the Italian word indietrismo, which is really, a, you know, not a kind word at all. It's terribly derogatory, and it basically means backward. Pope Francis also called such Catholics a reactionary, people who are fossilized in uh, their ideology, he said, rather than in Catholic doctrine. And Francis went on to quote uh, the fifth century, you know, great church father, uh, St. Vincent of Leran. Now, uh, St. Vincent, of course, is best known for uh, his definition of what constitutes Catholic, uh, that which is believed by all people at all times in all places. And you're saying this in the fifth century. Uh, St. John Henry Newman also used St. Vincent de uh, Leran to, uh, uh, to uh, to develop his own hypothesis on the development of doctrine. Francis quoted Vincent of Leran, and he said this, let me quote, he said, doctrine also progresses, expands and consolidates with time and becomes firmer, but is always progressing, a swipe at these American Catholics who want to look backward. He says, uh, he gave an example of how doctrine progresses, and he says, today it is a sin to possess atomic bombs. Uh, the death penalty is a sin. You cannot employ it, but it was not so before. As for slavery, some pontiffs before me tolerated it, but things are different today. And then he went on to say, uh, as far as these American Catholics are concerned, ideology has replaced faith. Uh, now, tribalism, uh, you know, to paraphrase him, has replaced membership of the church. These American groups are closed, isolating themselves, instead of living by true doctrine that always develops and bears, bears fruit, they live by ideologies, Pope Francis said.
Yeah, he he also reverted to a biological uh, uh, analogy there, and I would I would throw one out here too. In in, in biology, you have macro and micro evolution. Micro evolution, you know, the, the, a, a species stays within a species. You might get different stripes or colors or spots on a, on a zebra, but they're still a zebra. Uh, and then there's macro evolution, and that's when a you know a, a dog gives birth to a cat. And it seems like he's talking about micro evolution and then and it wanders into a little bit of macro evolution at the same time where something was okay and now it's it's not okay um, another topic jewel so that caused eyes to roll was when Pope Francis spoke rather dismissively about what he called quote sins below the waist without really affirming the need to keep chastity how did that all roll out and this is hugely revealing because the priest to ask this question was very direct. He asked this, uh, he asked Pope Francis to comment on homosexual Catholics who, I quote, do not see the call to chastity as a personal call to celibacy, but as an imp imposition. And Francis said, what I don't like at all in general is that we look at the so-called sin of the flesh with a magnifying glass, just as we have done for so long for the sixth commandment. And then he went on to say, everyone is invited into the church. That is the point. The most appropriate pastoral attitude for each person must be applied. We must not be superficial and naive, forcing people into things and behaviors for which they are not not yet mature or are not capable. Now, this could be interpreted to mean that homosexuals are not capable of heterosexual sex or chastity, and so the church should not force it on them. Wow, you know, that's really dismissive of somebody saying you're, you're just not capable of keep, keeping the Ten Commandments, so they don't apply to you. Um, Jules, let's switch gears for a minute. There's another story that's really breaking right now, an Archbishop from Berlin authorizing same-sex blessings and it just seems no wonder that he would be doing this when uh, Pope Francis speaks so cavalierly about these things. Can you tell us about this Archbishop? Uh, we're talking about Archbishop Heiner Koch who on the 21st of August uh, released a five-page letter. I read the whole letter this morning. It's a very detailed, very carefully worded letter, uh, very diplomatic in some sense, but basically what he does is he authorizes priests in his diocese to go ahead and conduct same-sex blessings. Uh, he uh, he uh, gives a, a number of arguments that the uh, those opposed to same-sex blessing make, including uh, statements from the Congregation for the Doctrine of the Faith saying that God cannot bless sin. He then goes on to give uh, arguments from the, uh, the homosexual activists who are pushing for these blessings. And then he says, well, come to your own conclusion, make a decision uh, with your conscience. And uh, he says, well, I, I'm not going against Pope Francis in doing this. In fact, I am following his intentions. He then extensively quotes from Amoris Letizia, the very controversial apostolic exhortation of Pope Francis, and then from uh, Evangelium uh, Gaudi, uh, uh, talking about how, you know, um, uh, Pope Francis allows a leeway for irregular situations. Interestingly, he throws in uh, Archbishop Victor Manuel Fernandez, the new uh, prefect for the dicastery of the doctrine of the faith, and he says, well, you see, even Fernandez has agreed to reflect on the possibilities of offering same-sex blessings. So, go ahead and do it. Mm. Now, Jules, you know that the church officially bans blessings for same-sex uh, couples, same-sex unions. So, do you think Pope Francis will do anything toward this archbishop or others uh, like him that officially condone same-sex blessings, and if not, why not? My goodness, Brad, uh, you know, Pope Splainers currently are twisting themselves into a million pretzels trying to uh, say why Pope Francis still believes that same-sex blessings or homosexual relations are wrong. 
But uh, the, the evidence is so clear that the opposite indeed is the case. Uh, so we've got the uh, dicastery for the doctrine of the faith in two, 2021 very clearly saying, uh, you know, uh, God does not bless sin. And then we have Pope Francis literally kicking out or kicking upstairs Archbishop Giacomo Morandi, uh, the uh, guy, the second in command there, who actually issued this uh, dubium. Uh, we then have two or three seasons of German pastors, priests, bishops offering same-sex blessings to hundreds of people in dozens of German churches. Nothing, not a word out of Pope Francis or the Vatican. Uh, we have people coming up to Pope Francis, the same-sex couples, and uh, you know who have had children by surrogacy. Uh, and Pope Francis says, "Well, just go to your church and receive the sacraments." Uh, we have the German bishops and the Flemish bishops, not only in synods, uh, endorsing same-sex blessings, but even coming out with liturgy for same-sex blessings, and openly saying, the, you know, Bishop Bonny, for example, saying, I met with the Pope, I showed him this, and he has no problem at all. So, from, you know, how long can we continue to fool ourselves and think that Pope Francis is going to come out with a very big uh, stick and wrap these rebel priests on the knuckles or rebel archbishops on the knuckles? That ain't going to happen. Well, that was quite a detailed uh, picture. You just connected all the dots to Jules and it comes in pretty clear. When it comes to teaching the positive faith, though, it seems actions do speak louder than words and maybe it's not heretical per se, to sit on your papal hands when bishops are officially violating church teaching uh, during your watch, but the Vicar of Christ should think about the day when he must give an account of his stewardship to the King of Kings. Jules, thank you so much for your reporting and for your insights. Thank you, Brad.